All right, we are project group two. This is our midterm finger puppet management presentation, life experiences through management. This is presented by Eni, Jet, Nicholas, Ryan, and Nari. All right, so we'll start off with our summary. The mission of this presentation is to educate viewers how restructuring the business about approaches towards management, effective ways of management, to inspire others through finger puppet management, this presentation will cover management and uses of design thinking for problem solving. We will cover strategic management through our storyline. Now turn off the light, grab a drink, and enjoy. Now we're going to dive in by taking a look at the plot. This is not your average corporate American office. This office is run by Bob Chicken, which is your more than usual useless CEO. He lives for lunch, which consists of alcohol, woman, man, chicken. Steve D is a vice president that is holding the company together that is well liked by the employees due to his hard work and dedication to keeping the company going. Lisa is our well-educated manager that is working with the new hires, Barbie and Jennifer. Barbie and Jennifer are best friends, but with very different work ethics and opinions on life. Barbie is a college dropout that thinks that her life will be guided by her good looks. Jennifer is a college graduate that completed her degree early. She is working very hard and catching the eye of her le manager Lisa. Lisa is very well pleased with her work and is recommending her to be promoted to a new position. This promotion is causing a, causing a drift between Barbie and Jennifer. Barbie is not pleased and goes running to Bob about the promotion who tears into Lisa. Lisa takes her concerns to the human resources manager, Jane Rader. Due to some behind the scenes fast tracking to get Barbie and Jennifer hired, Jane thinks that she needs to involve Steve D, the vice president, to step in and implement some serious management skills on behalf of his CEO, Bob. Let's take a look at our target market. Our target audience is for all ages that are intellectual and enjoy comedy. This could range from anyone to a high school senior, a college senior, or a senior citizen. We hope to relate to all types of management who watch our show. This presentation will give us critical thinking skills through management environment. Each episode will cover a management concept. Now let's take a glance at our characters. Our characters are Lisa a USF college graduate of business management. She's a manager at Hooters Incorporated. She believes in hard work and she is the floor manager of Jennifer and Barbie. Next we have Bob. He is the CEO of Hooters Incorporated. The position has been passed down to him from his father. He is currently an alcoholic. He loves young beautiful women and he is disliked among his employees. Continuing with our characters we have Barbie. She's a college dropout. She doesn't really have any life skills, and typically she uses her beauty to get ahead in life. After that, we have Jennifer. She's Barbie's best friend. She's an early college graduate, and she's green to corporate America. Our next character is Steve D. He is the vice president of Hooters Incorporated. He has a PhD from USF in business. He's young, innovative, and an enthusiastic individual. He's a true inspiring leader and is very likable and outgoing. Episode 1. One day Jennifer was telling her friend Barbie about how she wants a raise but the biz will not offer more hours and tips are not great for the season. So one day Jennifer mentioned to Barbie that a guest of the restaurant had walked out without tipping her. Barbie told her to just put down on the tip receipt so Jennifer was bar hopping with her manager Lisa outside of work and asked for advice if Lisa would do that in the same position to fake a tip. The manager had mentioned some things that she had learned in Management 3025 course that would help with this decision. The first bullet point she mentioned was the moral rights approach. This is where the ethical decisions focuses on actions and consequences Lisa went further to mention the universal approach to tell Barbie to choose a course of action that other people would choose to doing the same situation. Another approach she mentioned was to think of justice and this relates to the justice approach. This is where one would outweigh the benefits versus the cost of one's actions. Lisa's final bullet point 
said was to give thought of the magnitude of consequences, such as losing your job and having a crim criminal record. Barbie took these to thought and decided she didn't want to do something unethical. Episode 2. Here we are at another chaotic day at the Hooters corporate headquarters. Bob is strolling in late and it's already mid-afternoon after another bender from Sunday night. Steve is currently overseas trying to create a more successful internalization by expanding the business to new countries. While Steve is overseas, he is hard to get a hold of due to the time difference and international phone connect from T-Mobile. Back at the office, this is putting all the stress upon Lisa, who is taking a new load of work. To make matters even worse, Bob comes to Lisa's office looking for Steve. Bob didn't even realize he was overseas, so he gets his idea about creating a new promotion for the restaurant. Bob wants to give all football fans that wear their team's jersey on Sunday one free beer. Bob then leaves the office without giving any direction or details about the promotion because he has a tea time with his buddies. Barbie, who is in the hallway, overhears the conversation and comes into Lisa's office and sits down while playing on her phone. When Lisa asks what she wants, Barbie tells her she wants to volunteer to work on the promotion. Lisa is skeptical but agrees since she thinks it will be an easy task and is already overwhelmed. While Lisa is telling Barbie her ideas, Barbie is cutting her off and talking herself about random things. She thinks she knows more than she does and isn't open-minded to any ideas and isn't developing any empathy for Lisa. Her listening skills are terrible. From here, you guessed it, only chaos ensues. Alrighty, episode 3. Steve D., the vice president, has to do something about increasing Hooters Incorporated revenues. So far, Bob the CEO has been useless as he always invites young girls to the place and gives them drinks for free. Jennifer and Barbie do not like this because the main reason why they work there is getting tips. Since most of the customers are invited by Bob, the bill gets compensated by the CEO and there are no tips for the Hooters girls like Jennifer and Barbie. At some point, Barbie was so mad and she wanted to create a bill without Bob or anyone knowing. Jennifer told her that this would be unethical and would get her fired. Steve D. finally convinces Bob to stop doing this because the business is dying. Now, his job is to help Hooters maximize their profits. The Hooters' new challenge is to provide value to customers that exceeds what competitors can provide, competitive advantage. There is only one way that Steve can get Hooters back on its feet, and that's by rethinking its business model. The new Hooters promises to maintain critical assets, the Hooters girls, while rethinking other elements of the business proposition, such as more modern uniforms, better quality food, new comfortable chairs, and a decor that looks less like a strip club. Lisa also came up with an amazing idea to produce value for customers that is superior to the value provided by competitors. Superior value. She wants to create a Hooters catering service provided by Hooters girls. It could be the ideal Hooters menu for birthday parties, dinners, meetings, or really many other function. Episode 4. After Barbie realizes she can obtain more money and eventually a better job by being placed in a human resources management position in the Hooters corporate office, she decides to exercise what she learned about socialization and training in her college man management class before she dropped out. Barbie realizes the only way to achieve a corporate position and therefore obtain more money is to work her magic and begin the flirtation process. Socialization is one of the big tactics that is required to work at her job, and she decides to fight fire with fire and use the same socialization tactics on her male supervisors and managers. Eventually, Barbie catches the eye of her manager, and they hit it off. Throughout the next few months, she is accepted into a human resource management position, but realizes she doesn't possess the necessary skills to complete the job. Barbie realizes that her friend Jen does have the necessary skills to complete the job. Barbie has a dialogue with Jen 
and explain to her how she made it to the corporate level. She tells Jen to create the same game plan so Jen can get to the corporate office and be of assistance to Barbie. Eventually, Jen has a socialization and training meeting with Dr. Bob Chicken and he explains that Jen needs to tone it down, yet, at the same time, Jen and Dr. Bob keep giving mixed signals to each other. Eventually, Jen is also hired at the corporate office. You can guess what happens from there. Looking at these reports is causing me some serious alarm. We can't seem to keep employees that would assist with the call waiting average and return to our turnover rate that was low when I first took over this department. I should talk to Jane. Jane, this is the second group of new hires that have come out of training without the necessary product knowledge that they should have. Mr. Smith, why do you say that? Well, I had Dallin and Jessica, which are both new hires, shadowing with Linda throughout the day, and Linda said that they had more than the usual questions about the products that they would be assisting the customers with on their calls once they felt comfortable enough to work on their own. That's odd. From the last group of new hires, we have had several resign from the company, and in their exit interview, they stated that the quality of training they received did not align with the job requirements. Well, Mr. S um, I have spoken with Ms. Newberry, and she assured me that the training she provided me was adequate. I believe that she did cover the techn technological aspects of the job, but not the product knowledge or the flow of the call. Mr. Smith, I am very sorry to hear that and concerned. Our recruitment team are getting qualified candidates that look good not only on paper, but come with high recommendations and the job skills required. I think maybe it's time for an evaluation of Ms. Newberry's training materials and her delivery method. Jane, I am not trying to start trouble, but this is affecting our call handling and wait times for our customers. I would hate for us to lose customers over the quality of our customer care team or to even reflect badly on my part as the manager for this department. Not to worry, Mr. Smith. I will have a talk with Ms. Newberry to follow up and I will notify you within the week of the changes and how they will be implemented for the training of our new hires. If you like what you heard, we have more coming and this is to be continued. Episode 6 entails strategic management setting individual and organizational goals. Episode 7 entails communication and negotiation. New Hooters Clothes Designer and Salary Negotiation. We want to thank you once again for listening to our project and we hope you were entertained and informed. Please stay tuned for more coming.